Hello, my name is Ben Price. I'm from San Antonio. It's December of 2016, and I'd like to take a few moments and talk about uh, voltage and uh, current in terms of amplifiers and speakers. Uh, I'm going to step in front of the, the video here, introduce myself, and then we'll go back and talk about what's on the board. So, uh, uh, hello there. Traditionally, uh, when people are talking about amplifiers, they refer to power, ohms, and uh, you know, my amplifier is 500 watts, and 8 ohms or whatever. And I'm going to suggest that we talk about this morning, talk about the relationship between voltage and current uh, in an amplifier and, and speaker. And I'm going to use the whiteboard in the back of me to, uh, to set this up. Really I'm going to talk about two separate things. One is just the general uh, issue of voltage and current, how it relates to amplifiers and speakers. And then number two is what happens when you add a second, uh, second speaker cabinet, 8 ohm, this, an 8 ohm load uh, to, this, uh, to the circuit. No, what happens uh, to that? So I'm going to step out of the way. I have a little laser pointer and I'll talk about what's on the board just to, so we get that ready to go. Then I'll come back in and we'll, we'll fill in some, uh, some values here. So uh, on the right hand side here we have, we have Ohm's law, voltage over current resistance. That's the one that we all know and work from. That's actually part of the, one of the challenges that we have in, in understanding this is we, we go back to Ohm's Law and there's, a, there's sort of a trick to it and we'll come back to that in a moment. Down below we have a, a same thing just written out, the voltage measured in volts, the current measured in amps, resistance measured in ohms. And on the bottom here we have a formula power, which is, or we have a statement power measured in watts. Uh, I have the resistance uh, labeled in red because for our, our presentation here we're going to consider the a resistance to be fixed and initially it's going to be fixed at 8 ohms this speaker cabinet we have is an 8 ohm uh, speaker cabinet so the effective resistance of this of the speaker is 8 ohms uh, the middle uh, circle here we'll be filling in values uh, into that and we'll end up really with this table down here this is an 8 ohm uh, table uh, so for the moment let's go over now and look at our what we're our set up thing we have a uh, this is a guitar and a, a amplifier, and then a, the amplifier is here, and the speaker. The uh, green portion, this is the output section of the amplifier. Uh, this is the voice coil of the speaker. And you can see there's a connection, a wire from the, uh, from the speaker cabinet to the amplifier. And there's the circuit there. The green, the green wires are the circuit in this case. So what does an amplifier do? Well, it really, uh, it amplifies voltage, and we see that here. So it takes a signal coming from the guitar, which is probably in millivolts, a little, sig little tiny signal here, and it amplifies that. It makes it into a, a signal that could be measured in volts. As a matter of fact, it is. So if we were to, uh, so, so the first point is, uh, we're not gonna be talking about uh, the amplifier doesn't generate watts, it doesn't generate that stuff, it generates voltage. So at the, at the terminals here, at the output terminals of the amplifier, you measure voltage. Um, and occasionally you will run across an amplifier on the back that will say uh, such and such 37 volts or whatever the case may be. Not, not very common, but you, you will see that from time to time. So amplifiers uh, amplify voltage. We can put a, a simple multimeter across the terminals and measure the voltage that, that comes out. So for our setup, we have an 8 ohm uh, speaker cabinet here, and we're going to take our multimeter here and put it on the terminals and measure the voltage coming out. So we're going to turn the volume of our guitar amplifier up to uh, halfway. So, so it doesn't matter. Do I turn it up to some point? So here's, uh, here's what we have now. We have the, uh, the voltage measured at the terminal here as being uh, 16 volts. So I'm going to fill that in. There's 16 volts. We know the resistance we said was fixed at 8 ohms. So uh, by our Ohm's Law formula, that says that the current in the circuit, which is equal in the circuit, is 2 amps. And through our power formula, which is power equals current times uh, voltage, there's some other power formulas, but the one we're going to use for today is power equals uh, current times voltage. And we've just turned it around, so we've made a little table because we're measuring voltage, or starting the voltage. So we have 16 volts. We said that's 2 amps. We multiply those two together, E times I, 32 watts. So our our present power level is producing uh, 32 watts uh, through this through this circuit. By the way, 
if we take this volume control and turn it all the way off, the voltage we measure at the terminals will be zero. And if we turn the volume control all the way up, it will be whatever the maximum amount of voltage is that the amplifier is capable of producing. So even a uh, 1000 watt amplifier, if you turn the volume control down to more or less zero, you could have a, a relatively uh, low powered speaker and it would drive it, it would be fine. You just don't want to turn it up too high and we'll explain why in just a moment. So in our first uh, example here, we measured the voltage at the, at the uh, uh, terminals, 16 volts, 8 ohms in the 16, 2, 2 amps, 32 watts. You can see the table what we're going to do here. So if we turn the amplifier up, turn the volume up a bit, and now we've got uh, 24, turn the volume up, turn it to 11. So now we've got 24 volts there. Well, 8 uh, divided into 24 is 3 amps, 24 volts, 3 amps, we get 72 watts. And some of the table you can tell that as we, and this is, this is kind of important, as we raise the voltage by turning the volume up, the current goes up. And I started off my speech by saying we're going to talk about voltage and current. Uh, current is uh, the thing that we want to be uh, uh, cautious for because it's the current that will be the issue for the output stage of the amplifier or for the voice coil. Current is dissipated through, a, through heat in this case. Heat's the enemy of what we're talking about, so if the heat gets too high in the voice coil, which are very fine little wires typically, uh, it can melt one. Or the same in the output circuit of the, uh, of the amplifier. If the heat gets too high, the transistor will, uh, will simply uh, short, will open. That's bad. So the, the thing here is how much current can the circuit, the green part, through the amplifier back to the, to the voice coil and back to the amp, how much current can this circuit withstand? And that is determined by uh, the, the amp primarily by the amplifier. It's not really a speaker issue so much. It's more of an amplifier issue. So how much current can the amplifier uh, take? What we're measuring is voltage. So we measure the voltage and we find out that uh, this particular uh, amplifier can go up to uh, 88 volts. So we crank that sucker all the way up. Now we've got uh, almost 1,000 watts of power. We also have 11 amps of current flowing through this. 11 amps of current, that's a lot of current. So would the voice coil be able to take it? Maybe, maybe not. Can the transistors take it? <clears throat> you know, maybe or maybe not. If the, if the amplifier was rated to produce 88 volts, the presumption would be that it could handle that. But the point is, current builds up as, a, as, the, as the voltage builds up, so does current, and the circuit has to be able to withstand that current uh, all across. So the uh, first uh, part, voltage and current, we measure the voltage. Uh, the, the speaker consumes, uh, the effective resistance of the speaker, 8 ohms in this case, consumes a certain amount of current based on this formula. And it's the current that we're, uh, that we're looking for. So let's uh, go to the next step, which is what happens if we add a second cabinet to this, to this uh, scheme? So I'm going to put a second cabinet in here. Not, not the best artist in the world. say this one is also 8 ohms. So here's where the, uh, the we're going to diverge a little bit from the traditional uh, approach. Uh, you, you've seen tons, countless videos that say, well, if you've got two 8 ohm cabinets, you add those two together, and the, uh, the effective load is 4 ohms. So you've got 8 ohm cabinet plus 8 ohm by, over the number of cabinets. And that gives you 16 over 2, uh, and that's uh, 4. I'm lying. Just 8 divided by the number of cabinets. See, I don't even know what the formula is. So you get, you get an effective, effective resistance of 4 ohms. So that's the traditional approach. And we're going to look at that rather than uh, this way. We're going to look at it as a voltage and current thing. So, plus I'm going to learn my formulas later. What, what I like to consider is that, you know, the voltage that's produced by the amplifier uh, is presented to the terminals here 
And we were saying it's, in our first example, it's 16 volts, and then the, the, the speaker consumes two amps based on this formula here, uh, uh, and that uh, works out to produce so much power, 32 watts. If we connect a second speaker to that, the voltage presented at the terminal will still be 16 volts. So this will still be 16 volts presented at both terminals. The speaker, which is an 8-ohm speaker, will consume two amps of power. Let me go back here. speaker will consume 2 amps of power, so this one consumes 2 amps, this one consumes 2 amps. It really doesn't, when you add a second cabinet, it does not change the effective resistance of the cabinet. Uh, it may, it may, for reasons, for this reason, it may seem that it presents, uh, that the total load presented is effectively 4 ohms, but really what happens is the current consumption, because we're talking about current, the current consumption goes up. So rather than in our first example, we had an 8 ohm load, uh, 16 volts, <clears throat> it was consuming 2 amps. If we add a second cabinet, what happens is the first cabinet continues to, to consume 2 amps, which it always has. The second cabinet, which will be presented at 16 volts, it's an 8 ohm load, it will consume 2 amps. So the total consumption of current will go to 4 amps here. Okay, so let's go back to our thing, and we'll put 4 amps in here. These are called current dividers. Uh, now, in order, to, in order, here's the trick, in order to make this formula work, we take the voltage, 16 volts, divided by the current, and now we're going to modify this. We're going to modify this. The reality is, this is now an effective uh, resistance. The actual resistance of the cabinet is not changed by putting on a second cabinet, or a third, or a fourth cabinet. What happens is the current consumption goes up, and because the current consumption goes up, this formula says the voltage divided by the current should equal the resistance. So we get this sort of effective load thing. Uh, my message to you is don't focus on that so much. You, the, the thing that's important about all this is current. So uh, in this case, instead of being uh, uh, 2 amps, this would now go to 4 amps. And it would say, oh, we've got 16 volts at 4 amps. We've now got 64 watts. But it's divided between these two speakers. So the power is divided between two speakers. What would happen if we were to add, let's, let's say we're in a band and we've got a, uh, uh, an amplifier that can run mains and monitors. We'll switch on it where you want to have one side be mains, one side be monitors. We put it in that, in that uh, you, know, here. you put it in that position and you've got uh, two mains out in front, two 8 ohm uh, speakers, and you run the cable off to the first one and, and off to the second one. So you know, now you've got really you've got this situation here. And then for the monitors, you have four uh, small monitor, vocal monitors in front of the stage. So you've got four of these speakers that you're running into the monitor thing, and they're all, they're all 8 ohms. So if you add all that up, you've got four of these at 8 ohms, and you, you do the math, you know, traditionally it's going to come up and say, oh, that's a 2 ohm, uh, that's an effective resistance of 2 ohm load. Going back to here, at uh, putting 2 into the resistance and dividing it into voltage, you can see the current's going to go up quite high. So uh, at some point, the current in the circuit will become a challenge to probably an amplifier. So if you've got an amplifier and you, you're playing in the band and you've, you've got the thing turned up fairly, fairly loud for your monitors and you hear the sort of popping noise, what's going on is the amplifier is thermally shutting down. It's saying, oh, it's too much current for me. I'm just going to shut down for a, a brief period of time and then turn myself back on again. So when it does that, you hear the sort of popping noise coming out of your monitors. Uh, it's not because there's some issue with the monitors. You can add as many speakers as you want. They'll consume, uh, the, depending on the voltage presented to them uh, and the available current, they'll consume the current that they're rated at at the, at the voltage. So you can string these out forever. But every time you add another speaker, the, the, the current circulating in here goes up. And either the voice coil or the uh, speaker wire or the amplifier itself at some point won't be able to handle that. Um, in the case of multiple, multiple speakers, it, it's not, again, so much the speakers, it's the amplifier. If you only had one speaker, oh, I'm going to erase this. If you only had one speaker, and it was, uh, the, the speaker was manufactured to say, Oh, I, I can take uh, 
300, 300 watts. If you've got a 1,000 watt amplifier, just the one that can produce 88 volts, you can you could turn the amplifier halfway and you'd get about 200 watts out of there. Life is good. You could even probably turn it to 88 volts. And even at a, a thousand watts, it, it, it may destroy the, the coil, may not. But at some point, if you increase the voltage enough, it will short out the, it'll open up, open up the coil and the, and the speaker, and then and the speaker just, it's no good. So again, the current, the current is the issue that we want to watch. So uh, uh, I guess in summary, the, the main point is uh, when thinking about the uh, speaker cabinets and power and so forth, uh, I would suggest starting with the voltage. You can measure the voltage very easily. Uh, and then once you know the voltage, you can just look at the look at the speakers and what they consume, add all that stuff up, and you'll end up with you know am I am I in danger and not? Generally speaking, you're not going to be, but you would be handy to know kind of where you are in, in terms of relation of uh, of current consumption. Uh, if you have any questions about this or or, or thoughts, there we've we've uh, skipped over a, a number of things. Uh, you know the actual impedance of the speaker. We we talk about eight ohms and. I'm sure people say, well, it's not really 8 ohms, it's, it's a different way. So we've uh, skipped over some things that really do affect all this, the RMS values of the, of the, of the voltage and so forth. So if you have some comments or, or uh, questions, things you think would be helpful for other folks to, uh, to know or think about, by all means, uh, post them down below, and I'll make sure I get back to you uh, as soon as I can. So I hope everyone has a great um, uh, Christmas, Christmas 2016. Hope Santa brings you what you really want, and look forward to hearing from you soon. Bye now.